Good morning, Good Judy. Morning. How are you? I'm well. How are you? I'm happy. I'm so glad I get to sit here with you because I saw your painting at Mike Weiss in New York, um, I think in September, and I was extremely... October. October. Thank you. I was extremely happy. I'm really happy. And to get to meet you and look at your work and talk about it with you is exciting. So you can tell me, um, how does it feel to be... A, this is your first show at Miami Basel? Um, no, I had work um, last year also, the mm -hmm. same gallery in the same fair at Art Miami. Um, I had uh, three, four large, like six foot paintings. So um, um, this year I only had uh, one large painting because I just made my whole show for October. So I had about two weeks to prepare this work. Um, so ideally I like to work really big. Um, like eight feet or so. Yeah, is so, that your favorite size? Yeah, I like being able to um, get really physical and use, um, you know, large brushstrokes and um, have the surface really change um, depending on where you're standing when you're looking at the work. And so. Well, you do create an incredible surface, so many layers. It's really an exquisite experience to look at. It, it's endless. That is the most important part of the paintings for me, or the most, in, you know, the part of them that really, uh, t you know, gets me going with the work. Um, I like having really minimal flat surface and then building up layers on top of it and, um, you know, matte versus gloss surface and um, I think just having that visceral quality makes paintings, you know, that's what paint is for. Exactly. So. You paint about, you, you use paint as what it is, and I love that. It's all about the paint. Um, You're a real abstract painter. You, you do justice to that idea. This is really exciting. But there's still it, somehow a feeling you want to create a narrative of your own when you're looking at the work. Yeah, there is that. Um, I, you know, a lot of my work has uh, planetary themes to it, and um, um, but for me, there it's more of the idea of a, an orbit or an idea of um, a um, planet or a star and translating that into paint it becomes more about the action or um, or I'm really interested in how space photography filters um, you know really there are these this information captured by telescopes and then they're altered and everything so I like the um, virtual aspect of that and how it's you know I, I have no idea what a planet would look like if I were actually floating in space in front of it so that <laughs> <laughs> but I like it that you're thinking about that that's uh, awesome like what do we what do we get up and going. go through this painting here it's such a marvelous painting you should, I'm, I, I would be so proud um, there we go. Let's stay together so you can. And then, I like what you said. The, the, you can see the first layer, right? Is this the the beige kind of a frame? Is is that a first layer? Is that yes. what I'm, am I reading that correctly? I think um, you can barely see actually the first layer, but it's coming through here. So is it the that first cream? layer, yes, it's like a cream like um, circle. Yeah. It's just, I just painted a giant circle, and then um, this painting had so many different life stages. It, and it really looks <laughs> it. Like I, I love this pattern underneath, and there's two of them. But I mean, it, it evokes like say spiral jetty, or, but then when you step back, it reads completely differently because you have this wonderful figure eight. That's uh, like an infinity symbol. Exactly. Yeah. So, which um, I love that symbol. I love that, and then. On top, you have the zigzag, just wonderful color. That, I was trying to, this painting to me was kind of like thinking about the idea of a painting as a screen, and and um, so I was thinking also about old TV sets when you would get the totally. color spectrum when the channel wasn't working, or um, just, it's this painting is kind of like a sensor, or... It's about interference, and so that's mm -hmm. why there's so many layers on top of layers. And you know, I, if I showed you a picture of what the painting looked like when I first thought it was finished, mm -hmm. I think 
uh, you wouldn't recognize it at That's all. Great. That's great. That's yeah. great. It has, again, the many, many layers. Because from far away, you can almost see a head with these two circular, uh, and the infinity symbol serving as a side of mouth. Definitely. And these yeah. are shoulders. But then there are rainbows coming out from underneath this television set shape. Definitely. I see the television shape, and I see the computer screen. It's all there. It's like a catalog of our contemporary experience of seeing and learning and being. Definitely, that's it. <laughs> I like how you put that. It's, Thank you. Um, uh, I think when I was first starting this, I was playing around with the idea of making an abstract painting that um, did look like a face in some way, but um, because I was a figurative painter for a long time until two years, three years ago, and so I'm still battling with whether or not I can still use figuration in my work and how to make that happen because I don't feel like I need to completely, um, you know, I think that today in painting, even abstract painting, everything, sh you know, should Come be together. in it. Yeah, we're not Clement Greenberg, we're not Yes, Lewis. definitely I feel not. exactly the same way. I painted yeah. grids out of that desire for a long time and I got over it. Like, yeah. I was like, no. I need to represent some people. I need to represent some people who are living now. Representing yeah, I mean, reality. Or to some degree. Yeah. I mean, it's always wacky and awkward the way I paint, but this is such a marvelous. And then I want to point out something else that I really like is the, the spectrum of color in this work. It's just so vast. But somehow you maintain a harmony, color harmony, which is really dazzling. How do you do that? It's mostly intuitive. I think um, I took a lot of, you know, I was forced to take a lot of color theory in school. And, um, you know, with, for example, with this line that continues and is broken yes. with each color, um, that I was thinking about those pencils that you should have like a million different colored pencils oh, inside of them. Thought. And how you can't really control what color comes out. So with that line, I was trying to be. Um, as unpredictable as possible with my color choice. Mm -hmm. I think that's always. Um, do, you, do do they repeat? Yes, a little bit, like yeah. eventually, but random repetitions. And the links are also very. And these yeah. nice little V shapes at the bottom are very pretty, very good. And then the, wow, <laughs> it just amazes me. It's amazing. It's really amazing painting. I, I love also these like, wonderful squiggles. I, I bet you like Sly Twombly, right? I do. I know. I think a lot about Sly Twombly and also um, graffiti a lot. I don't know very much about graffiti, but I look at it when I see it, and um, just like the slanting of, of words, the way they're written, and um, uh, a lot of times, for a sketch for a painting for me will be just like a. Um, uncontrolled scribble mm -hmm. and then I'll try to replicate that in paint um, so yeah I love side totally <laughs> you know what I love I love this um, this curly cute texture here at the bottom also and how we can see it underneath that reminds me of Twombly a bit um, it's wonderful uh, this is one of those um, we have 10 minutes fantastic so this was Trudy Benson okay. and she's amazing and is this there's another piece here, though. I want to show you one more piece. Because this is, this is great, but she has another simpler piece over here. This is like, I would say, Trudy Benson for beginners. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, because you can, I mean, it's small, and it, it's wonderful. Um, I have no, no idea, but we can ask Danny later. Like no. <laughs> you know, um, we have some silver wonderful then the white drip and you know I always whenever I see that drip I think abstract expression it's like you're tipping your hat and I think it's very American and very New York I I just really love the drip I'm know. the drip fanatic <laughs> I think I think um, I always want to make I don't want to make paint do what I want it to or I want to let paint you know um, so a lot of times you'll see things where, like the paint the, that link actually slid down the painting and I always let those things stay and I think that that is part of the painting. Chance is a big part of the painting. I find that absolutely thrilling and you know and it's funny Trudy because your work is to me really exciting and new and fresh and I've not seen anything like it's really distinctive it has a, a signature style you know it's yours 
yet there's something familiar orthodox even and part of tradition it's part of a modernist tradition postmodern tradition like this use of chance and spontaneity is really poetic and you do it so well like I love that break there and the sliding of the paint I love that moment it's really pure, pure poetry with a simple painting like this I think um, it's you know a lot of things you wouldn't notice in a bigger painting um, become more important so this is a new kind of painting for me normally my smaller paintings are a lot more hectic but mm -hmm. um, I wanted to go simpler you're distilling but, yeah Oh boy, I'm so glad that you're young so I can watch you develop your oeuvre as you move through it and it's a real pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. It's very nice meeting you. It was really my pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>